Okay, so that is the Etherpad link on your screen. Uh, so if you have any questions or uh, um, any problem, just type, start typing the question. Hopefully, if somebody else knows the answer, feel free to start answering. If not, during the lab session, we'll go there and uh, try to address each question while the lab is going on. Okay, so please try to take advantage of Etherpad. So uh, again, uh, so agenda is presentation 15, 20 minutes, then the lab introduction will you set up the lab and hands-on lab. Uh, we have only five labs, uh, but those labs are divided into a sub labs. And when you do, some of the labs will take good 15, 20 minutes. Some of the labs are very straightforward, will take like five minutes. So let's start with it. So everyone got a USB or everyone got uh, already started copying on their laptop? Good. Uh, so as Paul mentioned, uh, we work for Ericsson Cloud Manager pro project in uh, Ericsson. And what um, Ericsson Cloud Manager is, it's a VNF management system across multi-site and multi-region. And we also have an additional component that we use called Ericsson Cloud Analytics. And that uh, product we use to get a performance data from OpenStack, which is across the site. So, and in this particular product, we heavily uh, rely on uh, Silometer. And uh, as you see on the screen, um, what we do is like, Ericsson Cloud Analytics will go in and probe those uh, different uh, sites which have this OpenStack instances. So we have the same problem that common Silometer user has uh, in uh, using a traditional Silometer function, which is slowness, slowness of retrieving the data. So we manipulated that by reducing the time of how much data we are storing in the MongoDB on the back end, how many times we probe the data, and we kind of circumvent the current performance problem. So that triggered us to start looking at what are the alternatives. And luckily, like uh, I believe uh, two years ago, this uh, Noki pro project was announced. So we started looking at that, and uh, I'm not going to call ourselves very expert in Noki, but we have been playing with it uh, from quite a bit long time. and. Uh, trying to learn, and this is our attempt to show you what we learned and what can you do with Noki. So uh, traditional Silometer architecture uh, is like this. Now, in here lab, uh, how many people are al already familiar with Silometer and use Silometer? OK. So very few amount of folks have used it. So, I'll just cover the basic Silometer uh, architecture in aspect of what are the components involved and what does e each of those components do. So it has something called polling agent. What polling agent does it, it pulls the OpenStack services and builds the meter. Um, then it has a component called uh, notification agent. Uh, what notification agent does it, it listens for notification messages and convert it to the events and the sample. And then there is a collector, which is it collect the event and sample created by polling and notification agent. Then there is a database backend, uh, which is the data store. Um, in the traditional Silometer format, all of these, uh, mostly in the production environment, uh, MongoDB is used uh, for this particular one. And then there is API server, different sets of APIs to view the record stored by the collector service. And then there is a component for alarm, uh, which is alarm evaluator and notifi notifier component, which evaluates and notify any event-based alarm or any uh, threshold-based alarm that you want to trigger. So these are the basic component. Now, since most of the folks here are not uh, familiar with Silometer. So Silometer is a component that you'll have to install uh, separately. You'll have to make sure uh, you plan it right for it. 
So what is the backend database you plan out? How much space, how much is the retention ratio that you intend to store in the database? All that stuff you need to plan out ahead of time before going in production. But now, looking at this architecture that uh, there are two basic types of the data in the silometer. One is the event, another one is the metric. So event is the record event, which is like, uh, for example, you boot up an instance, the start of the instance, that is an event from, uh, uh, it will notify the message bus, message bus will, kilometer API will uh, send you a notification based on that. Or you delete an image, you add a different volume, attach a volume, detach a volume, all these kind of uh, events. So, Silometer talks to the message bus, and from there, it retrieves those events. Now, there is something called metrics, which is measure the CPU uses, or a, mem a memory uses, or a data transfer I.O., or a network incoming and outgoing bytes. And then there are different set of database backend, as I mentioned earlier. MongoDB is most commonly used. Uh, then you can also use MySQL, but for performance uh, reason, because think about it, right? How much data you store into a silometer, that matters. That depends on your inventory that you are storing in OpenStack, the how many VMs you are creating, how many networks you are creating. And based on the message bus, every, uh, there is a frequency interval in silometer which will probe the data quite frequently. And as this probe the data, it keep on dumping it to the backend database, and it keep that data around for a long time. So you have to figure out that how you're gonna use your database, in a sense, uh, how big it should be, uh, how, many, um, how many records you want to retain, all that stuff, all that comes as a part of the strategy. So now, as a part of uh, Noki, which is the additional component that everyone uh, that, that has been introduced, and that used a Swift or a Swift as a Noki dispatcher backend, and that help in because like in case of Swift, it is a component in OpenStack itself. You don't need to install a separate uh, database component. If you are in your OpenStack. Uh, Architecture, if you are already using Swift, that will be your natural choice to store the Noki backend database. So, looking, at, so just to let you know, so there is a lab one uh, just to retrieve a data from the standard silometer. And uh, this will be a short lab which will get you familiar with the, how the silometer uh, uh, backend CLI works and what kind of the data it will retrieve. The major concentration in this lab that uh, we spend a bunch of time in learning Noki, and that's where we are gonna spend most of the time in this lab session as well. So the concentration area from our side will be Noki. So what does it mean? So you saw the earlier architecture diagram, and this diagram is it's a logical architecture diagram with no key. It is pretty much similar what, with what you, you have seen before. So the main difference is this particular uh, uh, highlighted area where you have a no key metering database and the event, it is separated out. If you notice, there are the two separate uh, database and then there are the two separate APIs for that particular component. Uh, also here, uh, you'll notice there is um, the alarm component that we have is now changed to A. So again, uh, we hope that we are pronouncing it correctly. It is A-O-D-H, it's Irish name, means fire. We Googled around and searched that it is pronounced as A. Anyone Irish here in the room? No. So that's what we found out, that it is called as, initially we were calling it as Aud, but apparently, as per Google, it is called A. So I'm going to call it A now on in the lab. So that is the alarming component. So what happened is uh, the uh, during the Liberty release uh, and the Mitaka release, 
um, they started separating these components out. So there will be uh, alarming component from now on. If you start uh, installing the latest version of Mitaka, the alarming component will be A. Uh, you cannot use a traditional uh, silometer alarm anymore. They are starting. There are uh, the project is going on where they are kind of separating out whatever you had in the silometer from alarming function point of view, and. Uh, uh, they started moving it to the A component. So now, why we are talking about this, right? All of this, what problem we are trying to solve? So there is issue with the silometer today. The silometer samples model is a free form metadata, which is flexible, but it's too heavy print. So if you, if you look, the way silometer store the database, uh, uh, in the database is, it's kind of a big string. All the information it is collecting, it is basically dumping as a big string. It is good, but when you have a lot of samples in the database and you try to probe and retrieve it, it is, it is very difficult job in aspect of the API. It impacts your performance. And because of this nature, it solves some of the use cases, but not all use cases that is needed in the day-to-day -day performance data retrieval point of view. It is not solving all of them. And so again, uh, so in the silometer, we have currently the tuning problems like a large storage footprint, data intake optimization, and the query API performance issue. So this is uh, to give you an idea of the production environment, like. Uh, Sometimes you issue a command, right, uh, or a API to retrieve a data from kilometer. And then you are just waiting for good amount of time. And sometimes your API will time out as well, where it will not uh, retrieve any data for 300 seconds or something. And that's a problem. And in the production environment, you are relying on something like kilometer to collect the metering data, but if you cannot, retrieve it and react based on those data, it is of no use. So that problem is getting solved by this Noki component. So why we need Noki, right? So it's uh, fast and scalable. It's a uh, metric uh, retrieval is uh, in the linear fashion in the order of one, okay? So it uh, resources uh, indexed with the proper data type and um, you, it basically writes the metric in the asynchronous fashion. And it, the biggest feature that Noki has is this automatic roll-up and the roll-off of the measure. That means when it is collecting the data, it is keeping it, but based on your uh, data retrieval policy or archive policy, it will decide when to roll up. So you can decide, like, I want to keep five minutes of data. After it collects the data, it will roll up to that five minute, or a day, or a year. And it does it automatically at the same time. So when it retrieves the data and it roll up to five minutes, at the same time, the roll up for the day and the roll up for a year also happen. So it's very flexible. Because of this roll up, your database is not huge. It will keep on rolling up and uh, rolling off all the measures. And performance-wise, it is literally like a day and night, where in Noki, you can retrieve a data as quick as you can. Another thing is, compared to Silometer, Silometer, as we said, it's a free-form big data, like a big uh, string. In case of Noki, it is nothing but it keep only two things, a data point and a time associated with that data point. That's all. It doesn't keep any other information in the database. But uh, we'll go to the next slide where we'll talk about indexer, like how does it map then uh, the same data, what Silometer is retrieving, and if Nokia is only keeping these two data points, how, how does it compare? We'll talk about that in the next slide. Um, in terms of the indexer driver, uh, it used PostgreSQL or MySQL, and uh, that's what indexer will explain in the next slide. Uh, 
It has a storage driver. It can be file be, uh, file system based. It could be a Swift based. It could be a Ceph or Influx DB. You have a multiple choice there. What you want to use. Uh, Nokia also supports the custom aggregation uh, functions. So you can uh, write your own uh, aggregation types and method that you want to use in Nokia. So it is quite flexible. Uh, it works with or without Keystone. So if you want to bypass the OpenStack uh, open stack, stack completely and want to use Nokia, you can use it. You can bypass Keystone, and you can use just a basic authentication me mechanism to retrieve that data. Another advantage of Nokia is it supports the multi-tenancy feature. So you can, so if I am admin tenant uh, or uh, I am a tenant amol, I can only retrieve a data for that tenant amol. I I'll not get a data for the other tenant. So it has that multi-tenancy feature. So. What are the like a key concept when we start? If you start going, uh, if you start looking at the Nokia documentation, you will come across all these keywords. So, what are these keywords for? Like resource, what is the resource mean? So, any type of cloud resource. In our case, uh, from the OpenStack point of view, any instance or any volume that you create, uh, or any network that you create, any NIC port that you create, is a resource. Uh, so it will have its own UUID in OpenStack. Uh, metric, uh, what is the metric? Metric identified by UUID and the combination of the name and the resource ID. So for example, uh, for the instance, uh, instance could be uh, one particular metric or a CPU utilization. That is another uh, name that has given to a metric. So, you can either use a UUID or you can use like for VM A and VM B, I want to get a CPU util. That is a, that's a keyword that they're using, CPU underscore util. I want to use, uh, I want to retrieve a metric for the CPU utilization. So I can query based on that. I don't need to know in that case the UUID uh, for that particular metric. Major, so as I mentioned earlier, it just stored timestamp and a value. Only two data points is stored in the database. So that is what it is called major. So all the APIs related with that, it's, it's called major in uh, 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 Silometer. Archive policy, so here is where it kind of difference between a very big and key difference uh, compared to Silometer where what is the archive policy? It's admin, uh, admin defined data storage policy. Uh, and what you can do is, uh, it is a, it's composed of a time span and the level of the interval that must be kept bet uh, while aggregating the data. So for example, right, I can retrieve a data like uh, 12 points over one hour, that is one point per five minute. Or I can have one point every one hour over one day, that is a 24 point. So it automatically keep on rolling up as it retrieves data. So if I have um, like a 12 point over one hour, that means one point every five minutes. So it will keep track of the 300 seconds, that is the five minute uh, data. Uh, it will, by default, it will use uh, uh, aggregation of mean. So what did that mean is the aggregation of data or function this is used to roll up the data. Uh, also, one point I missed uh, while mentioning is uh, granularity. So while retrieving the data, you have to, when you create any, uh, uh, any matrix or, uh, in the Noki, you have to specify uh, uh, granularity. So for example, you are creating alarm, right? And in order to trigger that particular alarm, you need to specify that what you are looking for, like every five seconds of data or every one minute of data. When do you want to, in what uh, scenario you want to trigger, what threshold scenario you want to trigger the alarm. That's where this uh, granularity comes in picture. And the retention ratio. So source data is not stored permanent, uh, permanently. 
uh, it detained, uh, it's retained uh, as per the data storage policy. So uh, whatever policy we define as it keep on rolling up that data. So overall, the footprint of the database is very little compared to the traditional kilometer database. Um, so here is the difference which I, I was uh, trying to, so Noki indexer, right? The Noki main concept is to obtain a different metric data point, right? So resources are strongly typed attribute. Uh, and metric record by the contact name. It could be CPU, util, CPU, memory, or different types of name that they traditionally support. And it's loosely associated matrix can be cross-aggregated for the resources. So what happened is if you see here, there is an indexer and there is a storage. So in, in case of indexer, uh, it is keeping the resource uh, resource instance. Um, so it is keeping the record of actually what that resource belongs to, OK? And it will map to the storage. And it will basically link it to each other so that it will give you a, a, a reading of the data that you are trying to retrieve. So what do I mean by that is if you say, like, uh, you run the Noki API and you are trying to retrieve a uh, particular matrix. At that time, if, you're, if you want, for instance, A, you want to retrieve a uh, CPU utilization matrix. So what Noki will do in that case is it will go uh, first to the indexer, try to find, OK, for this particular indexer, uh, for this particular instance, for this particular resource, I need to get a CPU utilization. And then it will map based on what it is stored in the storage and retrieve that data for you. So basically, from database point, concept point of view, uh, as in Silometer, uh, you have a free form of a data, and it quite extends your operation to just to retrieve one particular value uh, when you have free form of the data. But in this case, since the index is there, the data retrieval is very faster. Uh, also, if the resource type, uh, uh, if the resource type uh, for Noki is unknown, uh, you can use a generic uh, type. So, what is resource type? So, when you run the lab, you will see um, that if you create an instance, Silometer uh, APIs will right away start retrieving the data and start. Uh, putting that data uh, based on the, your configuration. Let's assume the configuration is no key in the back end. Silometer will start retrieving that data and automatically will start storing all the data related with that particular instance. And it will have, the list is quite big. It will have the network incoming outgoing bytes. It will have memory. It will have CPU utilization, CPU, virtual CPU all that information. And when it's stored in the database, it will store as a resource type. So in this case, for instance, there will you will see a different set of resource type, uh, CPU, uh, vCPU, uh, CPU util, and so on. So in essentially, like compared to Silometer, uh, Silometer legacy storage capture full uh, Resolution data, each data point has a timestamp, measurement, ID, resource, metadata, metric, and so on. Uh, but compared to that, in Noki, you will see uh, it stores the aggregated data in the time series fashion, time series database. And each data point has a timestamp and a measurement. So resource metadata is stored separately, and it is linked to the measurement. So. Uh, as you saw in this particular diagram, it is stored separately and it is linked to that particular measurement. That exactly what Noki does. Uh, so this, all the Noki uh, re related labs is we are trying to do in lab number two. It will help you to understand the how Noki does the, like a threshold alarm and uh, uh, how. Uh, 
you can insert the measures if you or how Noki get the metric list and all that stuff. So in the lab, uh, keep it in mind that we are using the standard uh, Noki CLI. We are not using the uh, API. That, what do I mean by that is we are not using the REST API. We are using the CLI, which in the background will call all the APIs. So the lab two uh, will be f completely concentrated on Noki. And A, uh, so this is the alarm component. So A project is for the alarm code handling. It is separated out uh, uh, from the Silometer. Um, alarm feature of Silometer is deprecated after Liberty release and completely removed in Mitaka. So as I mentioned earlier, if you try to install Mitaka from scratch, you will not see the alarm feature in the Silometer. It will, you will have to install this additional component called A and use that. Um, A use Silometer or Noki as its backend storage, and each A service can scale horizontally based on the load. Uh, we can also trigger alarm based on the custom rules and that we can define. This is the, a very strong feature because there is a feature called composite alarm where you can use a different set of combination to trigger alarm. Um, so that it is very powerful if you want to react based on the alarm. Also, this diagram will show like how the A works. It has a alarm notifier, evaluator, same like what you had in the silometer before. It is just they have separated it out now and um, it is now, because they separated it out, it is very easy to scale just this particular uh, alarming feature. Um, and the external system access the A through the uh, service API. So uh, we will have, um, th there will be lab three and four with A. So when we'll run uh, alarm feature lab, it will use Noki as a backend. So uh, it's a combination of Silometer, Noki, and A, the lab three and four. You will use all of these components. And also there is the lab number five that we have added. Uh, hopefully if you can finish uh, one to four, Lab five is a little bit for the advanced user where you will create a comp composite alarm or you will also use the webhooks uh, to send alarm uh, to outbound to whatever URL you are specifying. Um, so the, in conclusion, Noki actually provides a significant performance improvement for retrieving the data compared to the silometer. Uh, if you are a regular Silometer user, you will see a significant difference uh, while using Noki. Uh, a separation from the core Silometer makes it a quite a flexible architecture. And again, it doesn't matter what we are saying. Till you play with it, till you try out this thing, you'll, you'll not learn. So hands-on is the key. Uh, so let's get started with the lab. Um, how many people have DevStack up and running right now? And how many people need help right now? OK. So what we'll do is uh, me and Paul will start walking around and try to address the problem. And uh, let's take it from there. Uh, once uh, the people uh, have DevStack up and running, we'll start uh, with the lab. But if you are already have DevStack up and running, uh, please uh, go uh, start using the labs. Now, the lab, uh, if you have USB drive, there is a PDF with each lab defined. Um, so you can just start referring to that and start working on the lab. Uh, what I will do is I'll come on the floor and uh, start addressing the issues.
Um, how many people are okay now? Good. I mean, they have Desta, Cap and Running, and using Lab. Okay. okay. Uh, let's. Uh, I just want to go over the lab real quick. In a sense, what we are doing in the lab. Uh, in the first lab, uh, what we are doing is we are running a bunch of silometer commands and getting out uh, uh, different types of meters, the sample related with the meter, and that's all about it in the first lab. Uh, no, nothing, mo nothing more than that, just to get familiarity with how silometer is retrieving the data. In our case, in this lab, uh, to fit everything in the dev stack, we put it in... Uh, uh, we, instead of using MongoDB as a backend, we use MySQL as a backend because we are not storing that much amount of data and the main intention was to fit it into the dev stack virtual machine. Uh, so that first lab. The second lab is where you cop change the configuration in the silometer.conf file and you add a dispatcher as a Noki so that it will go to the Noki backend. Uh, in order to take that in effect, ideally, uh, you just need to restart the silometer processes and the Noki processes. Uh, but in the lab, you'd see that will tell you to reboot the dev stack only because not all people are familiar with the screen command. So rebooting is a quick choice of uh, uh, restarting all the processes. So that, that's why we are asking you to reboot. Once you reboot, uh, at that time in the uh, in the lab, you will see, let me go to the lab actually, on the screen, give me one second. So once you copy the silometer.conf uh, and reboot, um, this is the where we are actually calling out what is changing in the lab, uh, what exactly we have changed. We changed the Noki, the dispatcher as Noki. Uh, what we found out uh, while we were doing this test, uh, the documentation of uh, Noki was not that great. But on Tuesday night, the documentation was updated and uh, some of the parameters that we have been using here are deprecated. When the feature work as is, no issues there, but some of these parameters are deprecated. Uh, so for example, here on the screen, you see the uh, dispatcher no key, right? Now on it is, it doesn't honor that. It meter dispatcher no key is good enough for it. So that is deprecated in Metaka. So we didn't know that, uh, again, uh, since we tested with this, I didn't want it last minute surprises if it doesn't work or my code base is not up to date. Uh, this code base is uh, approximately two or three weeks old. Uh, unless something is updated later on, uh, we may not have it. So I didn't want any surprises there. So anyway, so after you reboot and you try to run the same silometer command like a silometer meter list, you should be getting this error, gone HTTP 4.10. That means it is not probing the database of the silometer. Now, in this case, it is probing the databases, uh, the Noki database. Uh, so you should get this uh, error message. If you don't get this error message, do not even attempt to go further because all the rest of the lab need a Noki as a dispatcher. And if you don't get this error message, you will not have a Noki as a dispatcher. Uh, then basically we have a different sets of Noki uh, uh, commands like a resource list, metric list, and um, metric so uh, the details. So this is all for you to get a familiarity with the Noki. Um, also in in this lab you will also learn that there is a, how the archive poly, uh, policy definition is there and what is the default setting in our case for that one. Um, then you will do basically get the measures out. Uh, you'll 
So you will do a major show on the particular metric. Uh, now, please note that uh, the example that we have given here, in your case, it will be not the same. So that's how we, as long as you use a metric UID specific to your VM instance, it will be good. Uh, so again, uh, now let me, uh, let me know how many people have done with lab one completely. OK. And lab two? OK. So before I go to lab three and four, let's check out. Uh, I'll come on the floor again. And if you guys need any help, uh, we'll talk about that.
Uh, hi. Um, one common problem that we are seeing across the board in the lab is uh, lab number two, where you can see running a no-key command, you can see the resource list, but cannot see the metric list because it's a tenant-based, okay? So you are not sourcing in your, your OpenRC file correctly. Go to the home directory uh, of the stack user and then do a source OpenRC and do no-key metric list. You will see all the data. If you are seeing the resource list and not able to see metric list, it is a tenant based. Once you source in the proper tenant information, you will see it. Because you created a VM as an admin tenant. And if you are, your uh, sourcing file is not correct or the parameter is not correct, you will not see a metric list uh, for that. So just go to the home directory of stack, do a source open RC, and do a no key metric list. That's a common problem I have seen in the field right now.
So we have five minutes left, actually. So, or done, actually. Timing is done, I prep, 3.20. Um, so a couple of questions came, uh, uh, right? Is there a visualization or a GUI interface for this? So there is a project, um, or right now in DevStack, actually, it is supported. I did not show as a part of this lab, but uh, there is something called Grafana, uh, through which you can see the graphical representation of all your data that you can do. It is not part of the horizon yet. Uh, they are pushing it for the Newton release. I don't know whether it's approved or not, but uh, you should be able to see all the graphs and hopefully in the next release, like Newton release, uh, about that. Um, anyone who did lab five, I just want to guess, no? I would strongly suggest do a lab five where you'll gain uh, an uh, experience with the composite alarm. Uh, if you are using alarming feature or intend to use alarming feature, uh, that composite alarm, start looking at that. Uh, because that will open a kind of an entire new door for troubleshooting aspect of it, and you can react based on that alarm. The example that we have in the lab is about VM and, we are using an and of operator, and the memory utilization more than 90%. But you can like uh, do a lot of combination there where you have a virtual app which has five different VM, and you can use all those combinations in the alarming feature, and it will trigger alarm based on all that condition. So play with that. Then the lab five also has a webhook alarm where it will notify the other outbound uh, uh, webhooks. So it shows you how to do that. Uh, that is a good one, too. So, uh, any, uh, so one thing I'll tell you, like, uh, uh, some of the pe people who could not finish and still have the questions. Uh, I'm going to send an email out uh, to everyone uh, for. Uh, it's not coming here. Um, I will send an email out with the slides and everything, but uh, please send out email to either me or Paul with any question that you have with the OpenStack underscore uh, Summit Austin in the subject line, and uh, we'll definitely respond to you. Uh, and I will up upload the presentation on the Google Drive and send you email, and you can download it if you want, okay? And uh, thanks a lot for coming in here, and uh, do send an email if you have any questions. Thank you.